By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we are back at the Reborn League. This is game number three here from that league here on the channel. And this is a sealed event where both players or all the players that are participating in this event, I should say, have opened up a fourth edition starter deck two booster packs of Fallen Empires and two booster packs of Chronicles and they've used those cards to make a 40 card deck and now we're having a tournament this is game uh, match number three if you'd like to see the other matches you can click on the info card that's appearing right now on the screen and it'll take you to my opening and also to the first game and the second game of this tournament if you would like to know more about the Reborn League itself and what it actually entails because it's more than just a sealed event you can check the description below and there you will find a link to the website where they explain everything and the organizer uh, Richard will tell you everything about this specific league. For now we are looking at two players, Yoop, who is sitting on the left and he's playing with a green, white, red seal deck and on the right we have Avert and he's playing with blue, red and green. Game number one is about to begin and the player on the left is Yoop playing with a white, red and green sealed deck and he's showing his hand right now and I see Yoshin Soldier's Regeneration card in the middle, is that a wall of wood? I'm not quite sure. The card all the way on the left is a brass man and some mana in between so that's looking pretty decent for an opening hand in this format. Remember it is sealed, it is 40 cards sealed. Um, you don't know what to expect here with just a starter deck of 4th edition two booster packs of Chronicles and Fallen Empires being opened. Very limited card pool and it looks like Avert, the player on the right, is taking a mulligan now so that means he gets to draw seven and then he has to put one card on the bottom of his library and he's playing with a blue, red and green build. Let's see if he can keep this hand and he's not keeping it so he's taking two mulligans here going down to five. So is this already in the bag here for Yoop? It's definitely a huge advantage now because your opponent just is just starting with two cards less and, and there's nothing uh, that you had to do to make that happen. So it's a huge advantage here. Of course, we have seen matches in this sealed event um, where a player that actually mulled down to five cards, just like Avery is doing right now, still managed to win uh, that particular game. And look at the hand. It went very quickly. I did see a Lanoir Elves there. And there's that box. Very nice, very friendly atmosphere here. And there's a Brassman being played by Yoop on turn one. So that's some early pressure. And there's that Lanawar Elf from Avert we saw. I'm expecting an attack. I don't think Avert is gonna block. And he is attacking here. So that means Avert's going to 19. Obviously not blocking with his Lanawar Elf. I do believe I see a Dwarven Lieutenant there in his hand. Ooh, and look at that. Very good, so that means a Disrupting Scepter, that means he can start to put some pressure on the hand of Yoop, so that's bad news here for him. Still having that full grip of cards, he's probably going to activate it. That's exactly what he does, he has to discard, at least he gets to choose what to discard, chooses to discard a Regeneration. And there is a Scavenger Folk, and that can be risky because you can tap it and destroy an artifact, and there are two targets for him here on the battlefield. And look at that, a... Argovian Pixies 2-1, originally from the Antiquities expansion, and it has protection from artifacts. Or actually, I should say all damage done by artifacts is reduced to zero. And that card with a lot of glare there on the side of Avert is that Lanor Elf. And he's forcing Yoop to discard another card. And he's actually discarding a pretty powerful card there. I believe it's called the, the Phalanx Soldiers. Acacian Phalanx, I believe, is the name. It's a 2-4 uh, card from um, Fallen Empires with Banding. And look at that. Avery is playing the Dwarven Lieutenant, but he can actually because it's too red and he's already tapped his red mana there. And I think he's kind of laughing <laughs> about the, the mistakes they made here. I believe they're drinking um, an IPA brew there. And the activation of the Scavenger Folk destroying the Ocean Soldier. And things are actually looking pretty decent now for Avert. And because of that Disrupting Scepter, 
he's managed to overcome the card disadvantage that he had and he's completely back in the game he's actually leading at the moment when you look at the board states an attack here from the pixies so he's willing to trade but Avery is taking the damage going to 14 there's the untap Paying three, playing a land, playing a land leeches, and that's an interesting card. It's a two-two first striker for two green and one. And oh my goodness, you best to discard a righteousness. That's a super powerful, powerful card in this format. It's an instant, and it gives target blocking creature plus seven, plus seven. So it's kind of a way to remove a big strong creature from your opponent's side, leaving the brass man tapped. And paying three here, maybe playing something decent, playing a fireball on the land leeches. Makes sense because it's his biggest creature. And has to discard a combat medic card from the Fallen Empire. And you can play uh, pay a white and a, a white and one to prevent one damage uh, to target creature or player. I just had to think here for a moment and there's a trade between the pixies and the dwarven lieutenant does mean that there's one damage for you and I guess the only positive thing here about you situation now is that he's still an 18 he has an empty hand so he's not vulnerable anymore for the disrupting scepter and he has enough mana to play out everything oh and this is an interesting card I believe it's a uh, fallen empire let me take a look here and it's the Ecation Priest for one white, and it's a 1-1 one, one creature, and for two white and tap, target creature gets plus one, plus one. Or actually, you don't have to tap it, I believe. So you can choose more creatures, and it's with that recognizable artwork by Drew Tucker. If you pay attention to that, then you recognize his art everywhere. And that's interesting, the rack. And look at that, a giant growth on the lawn where else, taking care of that Ecation Priest and we see the wreck now in play and that means that Avery will get at least one damage going to nine here and the wreck dealing a damage for every card under three that you have in hand and there's a Talid and there's a counter spell here And the interesting thing here is that despite the fact that Yup has lost many cards to the Disrupting Scepter, he is still on 16 and Avert is only on 7. And there's a Goblins of the Flark. Now remember, it has Mountain Walk, so it's unblockable for Yup here. So Avert can start dealing some damage, although it's only 1 damage a turn. It's not a lot. Chooses not to attack with the Lanawar Elf. Interesting choice. And there is another card here. It's Protection from Red, I believe. It's from the Arabian Nights. It's a 2-2 creature. But there's a Spell Blast, another counter spell. So it looks like Avert is finding a lot of counter spells. But he's only on 4 and he's slowly losing life to the rack here. He does have more creatures. Played another Goblin, a Mons Goblin. Attacking with both and with the Lanawar that means that Yup is going to 12 here. Attacking. And he's not playing out his card. Interesting, so that must mean he's unable to, or it's just extremely useless. Because Avert still has that Disrupting Scepter that he's probably going to activate now. And that's exactly what he does. He loses a Forest here. Doesn't really need it, and... That way, at least Avert has to invest three mana. Attacking, and Avert's now on two life, and Yup's on nine. It's very exciting here. And Avert's attacking again. He's going to six. Will there be a fireball? This is interesting. So he's choosing just to take the damage. You're going to one life. He's taking a big risk. 
Attacking again. What's his plan? Oh, and look at that. Goblin Grenade for the win. That's actually pretty sweet, Avery, because and you have goblins and you have a Goblin Grenade. That's not too bad. Uh, not a bad result after a sealed uh, opening. So at least we know that now. So both of these players are going to sideboard. Now remember, um, with sealed rules, you can even take out an entire color and replace it as long as you replace it with the card you obviously you uh, opened in the sealed event so it has to be come out of your limited card pool so it's going to be curious because we see the player on the left really looking at all his cards so you may be contemplating about taking out a color um, so let's give them some time to sideboard and we'll get back to them in game number two game number two with that victory from Aver, it means that the player on the left Yoop gets to start and i wonder what they've decided to board out and board in. And here are the hands, there's a disenchant, a regeneration, some mana. It's, it's hard to see. I put in a freeze frame, but still it's hard to see. Is there an Ecation Priest there? And I see a, I believe it's called a Scout. It's Fall Empire 1-1 one, one for one white. It can give first strike to creatures. Not quite sure. When we look at the hand of Avert, I see a Spell Blast. He's also showing his hand, putting it on pause here. And I see a Mons Goblin Raider, a Dwarven Lieutenant, I believe. It's difficult to see, but they're going to play it out anyway. There's the Ecation Scout, so that's that 1-1 one, one creature that can give first strike to other creatures. And there's the Mons Goblin Raiders here from Avert. There's a Forest. It looked like he was going to play something. He is, actually. And, oh, this is, I believe, a 1-1 one, one Flyer, and you can give it first strike. It's from the Legends expansion. There's a Dwarven Lieutenant played by Avert. And there's that Ecation Priest again that we saw in the first game. And there's a regeneration over the Flyer, which is smart. You know, a Flyer, a flyer can be very valuable in these matchups. And we didn't see a single really big beefy, beefy creature in the first game. So maybe we'll see one in this second game. And of course, we did see an Elder Dragon hitting the board in match number two. So if you've missed that, that's definitely a recommendation here to have a look at that one. And there's the another Scavenger Folk again. This time, there's not really a target for Avert, at least not yet. Attacking again with the Flyer. I believe it's the Dragonfly. Going to 18 here. And it looks like Avert is a little bit in the tank here deciding if he wants to attack. He's actually attacking with everything. And of course with the Cation he can give first strike to a creature. I believe that's what he's doing. So, oh, this is interesting. He's pumping it up with the Cation Priest. Giving plus one plus one to his first striker. And then giving first strike to his Cation Priest. So that means actually that he's saving both creatures and Avert is losing both of his creatures. Wow, and what a play here by Yoop. And you can kind of see Avert shaking his head like, oh, how could I have been so stupid? And he's showing his giant spider. Oh, well, that was a giant mistake. But these things happen because you're playing against cards that you usually don't play against. And this is interesting. This is the Jade Monolith. And what it can do, you can pay one and it can redirect damage uh, from target creature to you as a player. But you have to take all the damage. So it's kind of a way to save your creature, but you have to take all the damage. And now he's attacking with the creatures that he's got left. And there is a Sister of the Flame here by Avert. And it's a card from the dark. Pretty cool art. Always reminds me of Queen, the rock band. Attacking only with the Cajun Priest, it seems. No, also attacking with the Dragonfly. So Avert's going to 14 here. And also playing a Yoshin Soldier. So there's a lot of pressure here on the board from Yoop. They're all really small creatures, but they are a lot of small creatures. Playing the Giant Spider here. So that's huge in this format. A 2-4 blocker. That can take care of all of everything on the board on Yoop's side. So that means a problem here for you because the giant spider has reached, you can also block the flyer.
and it looks like he's forced to pass turn. So Averett can take his turn again here. Having control with that giant spider. Let's see what he can do. He needs something big. Tapping five here. <laughs> this is <laughs> Beast of Bow Garden. I don't think I've ever seen this card in an actual game. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three for five mana, one red and four. Protection from red and gains plus one plus one if an opponent controls any white cards. So it's actually a 4-4 four, four with protection from red. That is pretty cool. And all that you can do here is play a Darkwood Boar. It's not too bad, actually. It's also a 4-4. Four, four. And passing turn, not attacking. And there is a Lanawar Elves. Not sure if that's, there's a Twiddle in his hand or is it a Zephyr Falcon? It's hard for me to see. And it is a Zephyr Falcon, the 1-1 one, one Flyer from Legends. In this case from the Chronicles expansion and you don't have to tap it when you attack. The attack here with the Darkwood Boars. Interesting. Will there be some kind of double block here with the Giant Spider? And of course there is that ability from Yoop to use the Ecation Priest to pump the Darkwood Boars and also to give it First Strike. And he's actually giving it plus one plus one with the Ecation Priest. So that means 5 damage here for Averd, going to 9, interesting, so he's not even trying to block it here. Of course, Yoop can also give it first strike with the Acacian Scouts there, and there's the Land Leeches we saw in Game 1 as well. So there are a lot of creatures here from Averd, but the question is, can he get through in a way? And of course, there's also the Dragonfly with that regeneration on it. There's also the Jade Monolith, also protecting the creatures from Yoop, of course, then he will have to take the full amount of damage if he wants to activate his Jade Monolith. And it looks like we're going to get a, to see a double block. Again, the glare is very annoying here on the side of Avert, so let's hope he's not going to stack up his creatures there. That at least we get a clear view of whatever he, do he does, because this can turn out to be, become a very interesting scenario. He's actually blocking with four creatures here, Sisters of the Flame, Land Leeches, his Beasts of Bow Garden, and that other creature that has a lot of glare on it, it's hard to see. So just to clarify, we have the following situation. We have the Sisters of the Flame, that's a 2-2. Two -two. We have a Dwarven Lieutenant, that's a 1-2, but can pump itself to 2-2. Two -two. And we have a Land Leeches, and we have a Beasts of Bow Garden, that's a 4-4. Four -four. And all these creatures, these four creatures are tapping the... Boris, that's a 4-4, and that has been given first strike by the Ecation Scout. So he first gets to deal 4 damage, chooses to deal the damage to Beasts of Bow Garden, and then there's still, um, there are still the Dwarven Lieutenant, Land Leeches, and Sisters left, and I believe he's now pumping his Dwarven Lieutenant. So that becomes a 2-2 as well. That means 6 damage here for the Boris, and it looks like Yup is choosing to use his Ecation Priest to make it 5-5. So he's now activating the monolith and say, okay, the damage from that creature, I'm gonna soak up. And that's it actually. <laughs> Everett is saying, okay, you know what? You've won this game because you've just killed, this is, this is the worst block I've ever made and you've just killed uh, a bunch of creatures and you still have your uh, boars on the board here. Well, in, I mean, in Averett's defense, I had to pause this game, find the cards, figure it out, read it, reread it, and still I'm not sure what really happened there. But anyway, that's some good blocking and combat work there from Yoop. So Yoop, my compliments, well done. Um, and hey, we get a third game and that's always fun. So we'll give these players some time to check their decks again. And then we're going to game number three. Game number three. And I think both players have, an, have the same chances here of, of winning. But look at that, a mulligan here by Avert. So I guess that's a slight advantage here for Yoop. And what a crazy second game that was. And it kind of shows to me that I think that, you know, Magic was kind of meant to be much more combat based much more creature based I should say than it is these days and even in old school magic you just don't see a lot of creature interaction 
anymore just because the the non-creature spells are so incredibly good but let's look at this matchup here uh, let's look at this decisive game we see a scavenger folk again attacking here that occasion scout on the side of Yoop and also a Zephyr falcon there for avert it's a pretty good start here for avert having a one drop and having a two drop and Yoop just playing a planes and passing turn it's not great attacking here with his Zephyr Falcon, that means that Yub goes to 18. Paying 3, will we see the Acacian Priest again? No, it's actually the Combat Medic. And with Combat Medic, I believe it's a 0-2 creature, and you can pay um, 1 white and 1 to prevent a damage to target creature or player. And look at that. That's cool. That's a 3-3 Flyer. And that's pretty powerful here. Powerful stuff by Aver because these flyers, the phantom monster, these flyers are hard to block. And what we see Yub doing here now is he's preventing two damage. So instead of four damage, he's only taking two damage. But it's not looking good for him playing the Ecation Phalanx. But there's that counter spell again from Legends. You can only counter a summon spell. And I believe Aver is going to win this one. There's just too much power here. And look at that. Yup's going to 9 life. And he's playing out a goblin from the antiquities here. A 1-1 one, one goblin that of course works great with a goblin grenade. And in game 1 he showed that he has that. And I think that Yup is with his back against the wall. There are so many creatures on the side of Avert. This is going to be extremely difficult for him to win. Attacking again. Having that phantom monster 3-3 three, three swing through the air. And I believe he's blocking something and preventing damage at the same time. Blocking the land leeches and then preventing the two damage. When the smoke has cleared, he is on six life. But all he's doing is kind of postponing. It looks like the inevitable. And there's a 2 2 body. It's not really going to save him here. He needs flying blockers. And here you can see how powerful a 2 2 first striker can be when you simply have nothing with more toughness than 3. There is a double block. Giving it first strike with the Acacian Scout. And then preventing a damage. Oh, and look at that. There's again the Goblin Grenade. <laughs> so those are two games decided by Goblin Grenade. Well, actually, I have to say this third game, if he wouldn't have had the Goblin Grenade, he would have probably killed him to turn after. This was really just uh, just a very powerful game and powerful draw by Avert. Simply too many creatures, too powerful, and there wasn't much that uh, Yub could do in this case. Showing uh, the kind of better cards in his deck now to Avert with that Stang. Unfortunately, we didn't see that card in the uh, in the actual game boarding in the righteousness again and uh, this was it this was the third match from the reborn league from amsterdam the tweeklafle bar it's a really nice place where you can play games if you're ever in amsterdam it's uh, definitely a place i would visit if you enjoy playing some games especially magic the gathering for now thank you for watching if you'd like to see more games from the reborn league Keep an eye on the channel. I have one more game, and that's actually between the two best sealed decks of this event. Uh, so keep an eye on the channel uh, if you want to see that. If you want to support the channel, of course, you can subscribe, you can like, you can leave a comment, you can share these games. It all helps. So thank you for doing that. Uh, for now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you. Next time. Ik het was, ik het is somber gezien.